Congratulations on the victory. I know uh, a lot of the talk uh, between Bobby, you said it was all, you know, respect and everything. You also did challenge him uh, to take the fight to the ground if he had the balls, and it looks like he did that. So I guess, how did the fight play out as compared to the expectations you had? That was great, really. Um, no, as, as I said all week, people thought that I was just going to come straight in and shoot in. And I told you all I didn't need to. You know what I mean? People underestimate me striking, don't think I can strike. I had a striker shooting in on me, you know what I mean? I kept him on the end of my range, kept him on the end of the jab, using me kicks and stuff. I never even got a chance to throw an egg kick at him, you know what I mean? But as I say, I leg kicked him and he shot in, and I capitalised on it. I went guillotine, switched the triangle, and I ended up getting taken the arm as well. I thought the, the ref was a little bit slow, <laughs> to be honest, thought he was... I think he was unconscious for a few seconds before I took the arm because I jumped out the cage and went wild for about 30 seconds and then by the time I got back in the cage, he was still lying on the floor unconscious. Were you surprised? I know you challenged him to take the fight to the ground, but like, were you surprised that he shot in that soon? Yeah, I was surprised he shot in at all. You know what I mean? He's had, he's had some brilliant stand-up fights with people. You know, like he, the Jim Miller fight, um, he stood with Jalen Turner, he's done three rounds with Fiziev and won the last round. People kept talking about that in the build-up to this. Um, so, yeah, I was surprised. But, as I say, everyone underestimates me, lad. Just because I look like a 14-year-old girl. You know what I mean? Uh, what did you say to Bobby after? Because we saw you go check on him, and then he finally woke up, and then we saw the clip of you backstage. But did you guys, you know, you said there was no bad blood, but you guys... No, yeah, of course, no bad blood at all, lad. It's just, in this game, You've got to, I, I, I like to be respectful, you know what I mean? It's one of them where we're, we're fighting to put food on the table for our families and the fact that, like, his arm went, I felt it, I felt a little crunch and it was, it was nasty, you know what I mean? But I just hope it isn't too bad because I know he likes to be active and he likes to fight as much as he can. So hopefully it's, it's not... A, a bad injury and he can fight again soon but yeah it's nothing but respect with Bobby hopefully when I get back to the hotel we get to see each other and have a little ale with each other or something and you said you had that your eye on that Hanato and Moicano in the BSD fight in Paris I know you liked that Moicano fight because the build up you said would be a lot of fun but a lot of fans think Benoit Santini is one of the more just dangerous fighters in general in this division so of the two which one do you think would just be the tougher fight outside of you know the build up I think everyone's a tough fight in this division, especially the top 15. You're not, you're not getting an easy fight. It's as simple as that. Every single fight in the top 15 at lightweight, it's the most deep division in, in the world when it comes to mixed martial arts, 155. So any fight is going to be a tough fight, especially now I'm looking up the rankings, you know what I mean? So every single fight that I have now, it's going to be a tough fight. Paddy, over to your left. Hiya. Um... It felt like you really seemed to enjoy fight week this week, almost having another fighter with a big personality to sort of bounce off a little bit in terms of like the press conference and all that. Was that true, sort of having someone you could kind of play off a little bit during the week? Yeah, it was. Me and my team were actually talking about this before. I, I enjoy it a little bit more when there is a little bit of, not bad blood, but a little bit of a back and forth. You know what I mean? I think my worst performance in the UFC was when I fought Jared. And we was very cordial with each other, you know what I mean? It was very respectful. And that was me, me worst performance. Every other performance, I've... I haven't, like, had bad blood with people, but we've had a little back and forth, you know what I mean? Like, Levy, Tony started chatting shit towards the end of the fight um, before we fought. And then, obviously, this with Bobby, as I said before, it wasn't nothing personal, but... We had a little back and forth, and, yeah, it gets me going a little bit. And is that why Moicano is so high up on your list of people that you want to fight next? Yeah. He's obviously ranked above me as well, but the fact that I think the build-up would be hilarious. I've already said it tonight. I think a season of the Ultimate Fighter and me and him as the coaches would be absolutely fucking comedy gold. And in terms of your performance, and you know, you have a big personality and it rubs some people up the wrong way and you, you have your detractors. First thing you did on the microphone was to sort of give it back to them a little bit. How satisfying is it to go out there and produce a performance like that and, and shut some people up for a while. Oh, that's great. Uh, you can't be shutting some dickheads up. It's fucking brilliant. Like, I love shutting haters up, lad. The amount of people 
that I've seen say he's never going to be ranked. He's not good enough to be ranked. He'll never be in the top 15. All that. Like, even fighters I've seen on YouTube, people talking shit, and then I just go out there and put on a flawless performance and absolutely school them. You know what I mean? Everyone's talking like, all week it was, ah, oh, Bobby's going to dog walk Paddy. He's not going to be able to get near him on the feet. I had a jab his head off and leg kicked him everywhere. And I don't think, I think he hit me in the stomach once. I didn't get it. Like, I'm fresh as a daisy. And then I caught him in a sub, and no one subbed him since January 2009. I saw a funny little stat there as well. My coach has just said I finished him a, f- a second faster than Islam Makhachev. <laughs> <laughs> Last one from me. Uh, just before the fight, or the day before the fight, you put it out there that you've signed a new deal with the UFC, right? So anything you can tell us about that in terms of duration and, and how long we can see you sticking around? Causing havoc in the I, I'm going to be here for the rest of my life, lad. You know what I mean? I, people took what I said and, like, clickbaited it. As I said, obviously, it goes without saying, just like what McGregor did with Mayweather, if you're getting offered millions of pounds to go and do the boxing match, you're going to do it. But I'm here for... I've signed a six-fight deal, so I'm here for a while. Like, and I'm getting some nice wages. <laughs> Need to get the duffel bag out. Congrats, man. Patty, over here. Uh, I think it was before the weigh-ins, you had a little bit of an altercation on the bus with uh, Caitlin Locker, and just wondering what happened there, what sparked that? Uh, no, we just stood up and started chatting shit, lad. You know what I mean? Um, I was literally sitting at the back of the bus speaking to someone, and I just said, oh, Jordan Vucenic's being signed there, another Cage Warriors fighter. A very talented one. At yeah, he was a very good lad, and... I think I said, oh, it's funny the way Vucenic and Morgan Charrier have been signed and Paul Hughes is fighting on PFL, the B-Leagues. And he stood up and went, Paul Hughes would smoke ye. So I was like, lad, who are you talking to? Major Chip Hazard, you know what I mean? He looks like the the fuck Major Chip Hazard off Toy Soldiers, lad. So people made a big deal out of that, lad, like I was trying to bully him. He started it, you know what I mean? If you're going to start something with me, lad... Be prepared to finish it because I'll put you in your place. It's as simple as that. And he was talking shit about my teammates last week, so I'm going to put him in his place, and that's what I did. Like, it's one of them. People try and start stuff with me to get a bit of publicity. That's exactly what he done. He, um, I seen him in the lift like three days ago, and he smiled at me and looked at the floor. And then after that altercation on the coach... He walked past me after the ceremonial weigh-ins. He was about four foot away from me and stared at the floor walking like that. You know what I mean? I'm not a big shit house lad. Someone says something to me, I'm saying something back. I don't stare at the floor like a little worm. And uh, you mentioned your teammates, and I see your shirt, Next Generation MMA. How much does that gym mean to you, and how much do your teammates mean to you? My teammates are like my family, lad. You know what I mean? I blood, sweat, and tears together. Like, we spar. Twice a week, we train with each other every single day. I've been training at this same gym since I was 15 years of age. I walked into Next Generation on the 20th of January, 2010. They what changed my life. I'll never forget it. All my teammates that are there for me, goes without saying. All my coaches, Paul, Ellis, Adam. Um, all my teammates, like obviously, there's no Molly. You're going to get to know a lot of my teammates, Luke Riley, Nathan Fletcher, Liam Gittins, Adam Cullen, Liam Malloy, all these people. You're going to get to know them because, believe me, they're going to be getting signed real soon. And uh, one last question from me. Uh, This is not to do with fights, but how are you feeling about the upcoming Liverpool season with Arne Slaw and everyone? Can't wait, you know what I mean? Um, I need to find out if Arne slots into his MMA, don't I? Because he's a Dutch lad and he loved the, the combat sports. So I need to find out if he's into his MMA and um, get down the training ground and get with the lads. Especially after seeing Darwin throwing a few one-twos the other week. Need to get him down the gym, see if he wants to get, some, get on some pads. Can we get Arnest like cage side maybe for your next fight? I hope so. Tell Dana to get on him, lad. <laughs> I'll do my best. How, how long have you been thinking about that Chip Hazard line? I um, don't know. I just, just come off the top of my head, lad. Um, he does look like Major Chip Hazard, though, doesn't he? He's going to get the Gorgonites. But, um, yeah, lad, as I say, 
people try to make a big thing of that, like I'm bullying a bantamweight, you know what I mean? He started that, he turned round and chirped up to me when, if we wasn't on a coach full of people with security, he wouldn't have said a word, because he's a little shitbag, you know what I mean? And I told him yesterday, I said to him, let's see what happens when Jake Hadley punches your head in. And Jake, you done me proud, brother. Love that lad. He absolutely schooled him. And what was he saying to me? Let's see what you do with Bobby then. Let's see what you do. What the fuck did I do with Bobby, lad? I've just put him a kip and snapped his arm. Yeah. <laughs> Say something, you little sausage. Paddy, we know how big your star power is continuing to grow year in, year out. Surely we've got to see you main event a card over here next year, right? More than likely, lad, yeah. It probably will. I'm, I'm game for anything. I've always said that. Any name what gets sent to me on a contract, I sign it. Because, as I said months ago, I thought that I'd end up fighting Renato Moicano tonight. But when the, when the contract got sent to me with Bobby Green's name on, it got signed. I don't turn fights down, lad. I'm not scared to fight anyone. You spoke about how you had some tough times in the build-up to this fight during camp. How proud are you that each and every time you step in there, you're overcoming battles outside the cage that we're not seeing in there? I always say it, lad. This is... I was born to do this. Like, obviously, everyone has struggles outside the cage. It's just getting through it and getting to the cage. And I was born to do this. Like, obviously everyone gets a little bit of nerves before they walk out and that. When I, walk, and like, when I walked out there, I was just, As soon as my song comes on and I hear that crowd singing and I start bouncing out, and I'm just like, yeah. Like, I'm at home. This is where I'm meant to be. And then standing in the cage, I'm just stood there, like, the nerves go away. And I'm just like, yeah. There's no place like home. You know, you mentioned the talent around you at Next Gen. It is, it's frightening, really, the, the talent there. You Adam Cullen, Luke Riley, Shemrock, all those guys. You envision a massive card in Liverpool in the future with all those guys and yourself. Yeah, 100%. Like, we've got so many lads from Liverpool, as you've just mentioned. Shem, Adam, Nathan Fletcher, Liam Gittins, uh, Liam Malloy. Uh, and then we've, we've even got lads coming down training from other places now, like George Staines, you know what I mean? We've got so many people that are on our mats training. Lad, we're going to have about 10 people in the UFC in the next few years. Mark my words, we are the best gym in the UK. Final one for me, what did you make of the main and co-main event? I didn't get a chance to watch them, lad, to be honest. There. I was doing that many interviews. I saw Tom's finish. Tom's the man, you know what I mean? Like... It's just finishing people with jabs. Tom is absolutely unbelievable. But I didn't get a chance to watch the main event and the little few looks I did get of it, it looked like a snooze fest. So we'll see what happens. Um, don't know if Leon, Leon might get an immediate rematch because it did look like a proper boring fight. Well done, the win. Nice one, fella. So Paddy, <laughs> just over here in the back. Hiya. Oh, what's happening? Right, so you got the bonus tonight. What are you going to spend it on? Me babies. Ah. Yeah. That's what are you going to get them? I don't know. We'll get them something very, very nice. I'm going on Aldi in a few days. Oh, where are you off to? I'm not saying because people will case me when I get oh, there. Oh, fair enough, <laughs> but have a good time. <laughs> you know that. Thank you. Uh, Paddy, mate. Just there, mate. You're yes, right. lad. Um, how's it feel, top 15, mate? <sighs> it's great. It's great. The amount of haters who I've seen saying things, oh, he'll never get top 15, he's not worthy to be top 15, this and that. And then I just go out there and put on a performance like that and absolutely school number 15 and take a ranking. Not like I've just been handed a ranking, I've just took a ranking. It's great, you know what I mean? It's, it's vindication. Dana said your star power is like massive now, obviously. Um, could we see you fight again by the end of the year? Maybe slot into something, or are you gonna? What's the crack? Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Like, I'm not. I've got nothing planned. As I say, I'm going on holiday. Um, I could be. I could be filming a, a, another t television program, something different to what me and Molly done. So I don't know if that'll take a little month out or something. But we'll see. You know what I mean? I know. 
it's going to be a pay-per-view. What do you want me to fight on? I'd love to fight in like Abu Dhabi or Saudi Arabia. Them tax-free cards would be good for me. Uh, fighting in America, lad, and getting 30% ta- withholding tax hurts the pocket. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Well done, mate. Nice one, fella. Paddy, just a quick one on fighting in, in, in Liverpool. Obviously, with the what used to be called the Echo. Yeah. With the changing in the branding, I think my understanding is that they're not letting combat sports events happen in there. How frustrating is that for you that it isn't an option at the moment for the UFC to come back and put a card on in there and, and, and put yourself on, on the top of the card in your hometown? The Echo's too small. What's the Echo? 15,000, something like that. The Echo's far too small for me. I could sell Anfield out. Never mind the Echo. The Echo's pff, chumps change now. So that's the big push, try and get, try yeah, that, try and get that dream shot. I'd love to do Anfield, you know what I mean? It's already like 60,000. Imagine with seats on the pitch. It'd go off. If you were to fight at Anfield, do you think it would have to be when you eventually fight for a title, perhaps against Ilya Tapura? There's already a storyline there as well. Yeah, there is, like, but I, I can't make featherweight, lad. I'd have to chop my fucking leg off. There's no way I'm making 145. But um, no, I don't think it'd have to be for the title. I think I'd sell it anyway. I think it'd, and probably get half an next gen on the card as well. Do but you think, sorry. As I say, I don't, don't think I'd need a title. But fuck it, Leah, anyway. <laughs> Do you think that fight could ever happen? He could obviously move up. That's yeah, I'm game to fight him, lad. You know what I mean? I am. I'm game to fight him if he wants to come up to 155, lad. I'll finish Jai Herbert's job and actually fucking knock him out. And how much has fatherhood actually changed you? I know you mentioned in the build-up how it was, it was a different camp, right? Yeah, I'll be honest. I didn't really notice it that much personally because obviously you don't really notice things like that. But my wife, my family, my team, Molly said she noticed it a lot. You know what I mean? They, they, they noticed the change in me. They've seen me mature a bit and grow up and... I probably needed it, lad. I'm then I'm 30 in January, so I needed to grow up a little bit, didn't I? <laughs> you mentioned in your Sky Sports interview that you were close to not actually fighting. How, how important was it to prove to yourself that you can still make it and push through the hard times? That goes without saying, lad. It's not just to prove it to myself either. It's to prove to everyone else that no matter how low you feel and how dark times are, you can push through it. And as I've showed tonight. Even though five or six weeks ago I was, I was in a dark place and my team were thinking about pulling me out because I wasn't, I wasn't all there. I went out there and put on the best performance that I've ever done. I've, ne- I've never looked that good in the UFC. That is my best performance. I was cool, calm and collected. I didn't just run out and try and take his head off like I have done in the past. And yeah, personally, I think that was a flawless performance. Last one, just thoughts on uh, Molly's performance tonight? I think getting need in the vagina a minute in doesn't help, you know what I mean? But one of them, she she lost. She go back to the drawing board, there's not, not much else you can do. She was, wasn't her best performance, she'll admit that herself. And yeah, hats off to Bruna Brazil. She had a brilliant game plan, come out and executed it perfectly. So... Yeah, Molly will come back stronger, lad. She's done it before. She's been beaten. She's come back and showed everyone what she's made of. She'll do the same again. Paddy, one, one last one. Um, here, just on this side. Here. Yeah, what's um, happening? Yeah, good. Um, so you love your food, and uh, it's been a bit of an intense wake-up, but like after this, what's the go-to dish post-fight? Um, lad, I just love food. So, I can't even say there's one go-to. To be honest, now, what time are we on now? Seven. Seven. Well, I'm going back to the hotel for the brekkie. I'm going <laughs> to go and absolutely load up on some bacon, sausage and eggs and pancakes and that. And then, it's actually me father-in-law's 60th birthday today. So, we're going for a roast. So, yeah, big happy birthday, Ronnie. Um, it's multiple people's birthday, actually. Maz, happy birthday, Maz. And it's Lisa's birthday as well, so yeah, a few happy birthdays there. But going for a big roast dinner at half three, so I'll be filling my boots there. And then I'll probably be hungry again in the night, lad. And I've been eyeing this somewhere that I go to by ours called 60 Kitchen. It's a lovely Chinese. I'll be getting what's one your, of them. What's your order? 
Uh, th this one's like a set menu, lad. I think it's um, I think it's salt and pepper chicken and yeah. something in black bean this this month. They change the menu every month. It's like an a la carte Chinese. It's power. Nice. Thank you. All good. Peace out, the firm. <laughs> <laughs>